Okay, Michael Talbot Kelly here again talking to you about how to step into more meaningful work, meaningful life, a meaningful service to humanity. And we've been going across from our day job of work for money to our side hustle, which could in the end be our full-time hustle of entrepreneurship or a noble project or writing that book or creating more beauty in the world. And uh, we've been talking in various degrees about strategies and how to own the territory and how to move with creativity into, you know, that deeper, the deeper waters of life. And today I want to talk about um, uh, why? Well, why would you want to do this? Why would you want to come alive? Why would you want to even, you know, step away from your six hours of TV watching and three hours of uh, video watching and, or, and being on a computer all day? Uh, why would you want to give up, you know, the ordinary, regular, even though it sucks, you know, kind of life? They're full of saggy energy and full of mediocrity and narcissism and all the rest of it. And I wanted to talk about narcissists, actually. He gets a bad rap. I just want to say that people get stuck in the surface part of narcissists, okay? But um, I also want to stay with this theme of why. Why, why, like, like, okay, so for the love of humanity, for the love of who you are, for the love of your family, your village, your, your partner, would you want to do this? But also, um, yeah, it's just how you're built, actually, you know. The why is, is, uh, is 10, 20, 30, 3,000 fold. And um, I would love for you to 10x your why. I'd love for you to ask, you know, go, why would I want to answer that call to Freedom Mountain, you know, or my deeper purposes in terms of work? Why would I want to create more uh, health and vitality and intimacy and connection and home and belonging in my relationships? Why would I want to you know, um, really step into a, a more vibrant, you know, authentic uh, authority of who I really am and start authoring my life. I want you to keep answering those questions, keep asking those questions. Well, why? Why else? Why else? Why else? And just do that as a process, right? And I want, we want us to talk about narcissists. You remember narcissists? Narcissist was the guy that was, you know, he was sitting over, you know, looking, looking at himself, you know, in the on the banks of the river and you know he was he was seeing his you know his seeing his reflection you know if this is the bank of the river and uh of the pond he actually right do you remember he actually saw his face being reflected here and then what happened in the myth right the myth says okay well guess what he fell in and he drowned but what happened later on at the end of the myth, people get stuck with this first part of the myth, right? They say, okay, well, he drowned, and we, we can't be narcissistic, right? Okay, so this is me standing up for narciss, uh, narcissists, not narcissism, big difference. Narcissist was a smart fellow, actually, because in the end, what happened is he went through all this ordeal. Remember we talked about the, or we talked about the hero's journey, he answered a call perhaps to the deeper self, right? This is his reflection. It's not, you know, it's kind of like a channel one, if you will, reflection of life, you know, just looking at yourself. And we're doing this. This is what the change, this is why you want to change and you want to upgrade and why you want to answer those calls because on channel one in life, this is all of what we're doing. We're just falling in love with our, you know, our bodies and our looks and our skin and our trying to make ourselves outwardly more beautiful. But if we take narcissists really serious, seriously and not narcissism, because this is narcissism, it's just, just doing this and then we get lost in it. But if you keep following the depths all the way through, you know, and get into the second level of this, so this is again the call, right? This is the ordeal. You have to, you have to get through, you know, the fighting of the dragons and the fighting of your symptoms and the fighting and learning how to befriend actually dragons and symptoms and how to work with them and how to... So that you, in the end, can come out the other side, and guess what? On the banks of that, of that river, banks of the pond that he was in, on the other side, I'm just using this as an example, guess what popped up on the other side, right? If this is, you know, this, this is the, the pond that he fell into, right? 
he went to the depths, he went to the bottom, he didn't stop halfway with anti-anxiety and anti-depressants and anti... Now, I'm not saying anything against all of that, I'm just saying sometimes we need to work with those medicines and also plumb the depths. We need to be able to get to the bottom so then we can then climb out. Because there is a call into the depths, right? And it can be scary. And this is what people talk about, the dark night of the soul. And these are the, the darker moments. And we do have this disempowerment that goes on when we just stay here. Because we're just constantly obsessed and addicted to this kind of mediocre living where we're looking at ourselves in the mirror 24-7. We're obsessed with eating and vitamins and all the rest of it. When the whole of humanity is like falling apart, there's like such a call out there to serve and to, to, to jump into a meaningful need of uh, autism or leadership. Man, the leadership that's showing up out there in the larger scale of things is, is more tyrannical than it is genuine, authentic leadership, courageous leadership. And that's why, that's another reason why I want you to 10x, you know, why you would give up your mediocrity, right? You would give up that mediocre living, that kind of halfway up the mountain level living. You're kind of stuck there, right? I mean, real, that's what mediocrity is. It's a halfway to the top, halfway to the bottom. But you're just kind of sitting there in a stuck place as opposed to the deeper version of mediocrity, which is like you're in a rhythm moving in and up to the top of the mountain and down into the village, gathering more goodies at the top, more awareness, more medicine, more treasures, and bringing them back down to the village, upgrading the village and going back out to do the same thing and gather some more good medicine and bringing it back. It's not this stuckness, and this is the same stuckness that we see in narcissism, right? And that's why we see narcissism, mediocrity everywhere. We see this tyrannical leadership, because this just promotes tyrannical leadership, right? So, back to narcissists. He comes up the other end. At the end of the myth, what happens is, is that they say that, you know, he had a flower named after him, didn't he? He had this beautiful flower. Um, which was called Narcissus, right? Which is, which is our tulips, right? Those beautiful tulips. I can't do yellow, but they're, they're just a gorgeous, gorgeous flower, right? Almost looks like a crown, for God's sakes. The crown of full aliveness. The crown, of, the crown jewel of who you are serving humanity. So what happens? Yeah, he gathers all his passion and his real power, and it goes, you know, the roots are there but he brings that way up. And this then, this is beauty. So why, another why we would do, want to do this, why we want to do this work of, we want to get out of our selfishness and get into self-care and to service in our own sincerity. It allows us to sincerely show up for life, not half-assing it, you know, or living a half-hearted relationship or living a, a, a half, you know, it's that half-heartedness that doesn't reach into majesty. This is majesty. Beauty will save the world, people. We know this, right? Okay, I'm on my rant again, but I really just want you to ask why. You know, I want you to move out of your own solipsistic, kind of small-mindedness, you know, sort of into more wholehearted living where you're starting to bring beauty to the world. Do your work, people. Jump into it. What do you got to lose? You know you've got to do some things. You know you've got to shake some things off. You've got to chase some stories down the road. You've got to stand up to some old anger. Some, you've got to get into, deal with your trauma. Uh, say yes to it. Set an intention and get into the depths. Bring the goodies up. The alchemist would say, this is, you know, every time you go down into the, into the they use this mining metaphor. Every time you go down, and we go down every night, people. That's what Psyche's trying to say to us. Say to us in the morning with our dreams, there's, you know, that what we're tripping on is, is where the treasure is. And we're tripping on this dragon. We're tripping on this depression. We're tripping on this relationship uh, cycle of abuse. You know, we're tripping on what, you know, we're tri tripping on all sorts of stuff. And if we don't do the work, this is where we end up sitting on, the, you know, on our knees, going, uh, you know, looking at this, oh, is that really me? And we get over-identified with our six-pack and our lips and our calves and our butts and our duh, instead of like nothing wrong with that stuff right but if that's the only game in town in your town and the only game you're playing and that's where your attention is well no wonder we've got a life we've got a world out there that's got all sorts of challenges so your question is i know you get this right is you know how can beauty how can the beauty how can you walk in this beauty 
right? How can you become the, the full expression of who you are and own the territory, own the podium, own who, who, who you want to be in the world, right? So my question to you is really, how, ask yourself, how can I help? How can I serve, right? That's a beautiful way to live that question for a long time. If none of these videos of going from work to service, you know, giving up the day job and stepping into your, you know, your, your service to humanity, if none of that makes sense, just ask the question, but really live it, right? How can I help? I wonder how I can help humanity here. I wonder how I can serve. I wonder what beauty I have to share with the world. How can I walk in my beauty? So we say in Ireland is that our main job, our purpose, our main deepest purpose is to, is to, to walk in beauty. So when you walk, people go, whoa, not just beautiful on the outside with the lips and the calves and all the rest of it. No, somebody who's really in their authentic authority and authoring their life. Whether you get it or not, that's okay. Those are the kind of people we need to just go right up to the top, come out of the depths, and then step into full leadership. It's that beauty that will save the world. So for the love of humanity, for the love of self, this is selfish, this is small-minded competitiveness, comparison, comparison, Jones comparison, you know, the Joneses next door kind of comparison, nothing against the Joneses. Um, this is wholehearted fulfillment, just getting on with, just helping people, serving humanity. Why would you want to do that? Because it fulfills you people, it fulfills the world. It's this beautiful dance. You got this. Any questions, please let me know. Bye for now.